Today let's take a look at these four functions coming right out of the Python standard library. The first was divmod. If you take 15 and you divide it by 7, what are you going to get? Well, we all know the answer to that. The answer we'll get will be 2. 7 goes into 15 two times with a remainder of 1. And that's what we get. It goes in two times with a remainder of 1. The 1 is the modulus, and the 2 is the result of the division. Let's do one more, just for shits and giggles. Divmod, we're going to divide 100 by 98, and dollars to donuts, I get 1 with a remainder of 2. Ah, that's so prescient of me to be able to do that. Oh, oh I'm on a roll. Let's do another one. Let's do an absurd one. 100 divided by 198. Now, how many times does 198 go into 100? Zero times with a remainder of 100. And that's what we get. All right, that was divmod. We're done with that guy. Next one we'll do is enumerate. Let's make a list, and we'll call it L-A-N-G. These are the languages I would love to be able to speak fluently. Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, and uh, let's pick another one. That's uh, Japanese. And I'd pick Korean also, but I'm running out of room. And I'd like to keep it all on one line, if at all possible. Oh, I just made a big mistake. I forgot to put in the equal sign. Well, let's do that now. And there we go. Hit enter. And, like in L-A-N-G, I'll get my four desired languages. What type of structure is it that we're dealing with now with a lang, L-A-N-G? It's a class list. All right, let's enumerate this now. So I can enumerate lang, and I'm going to get something unexpected. That, hmm, that doesn't help me too much. What I should have done was I should have keyed in. Mr. System, would you kindly make a list? out of this enumerated lang object. First enumerate it, take lang, enumerate it, and put it into a list. And let's see what we get now. Oh, I like that. Zero Spanish, one Portuguese, two Chinese, and three Japanese. Let's be extremely daring now, and let's assign this to a variable. A equals list enumerate lang. And what type of structure is A? It is a class list. If I key in A, I will get the same thing I got before over here. Notice the unique structure of this list. You have a tuple as the zeroth element, a tuple as the oneth, twoth, and threeth element of this list. Hmm. We were able to make a list out of this enumerated object. If I can make a list out of this, then why should I not be able to make a dictionary out of this? Let's try it. Why do I think this will work? Because I have tuples here. And tuples can be told to match up to each other by using what? The dict function. Let's try and make a dictionary. Let's be daring and assign it to B. B equals D-I-C-T of what? The enumerate, enumerate, lang, please. Enumerate lang and then make a dictionary out of it. And assign that, please, to Mr. B. And it did it. B, what is in your silly self? Oh my, oh my, we've got ourselves a dictionary now. Hmm. What type of structure is B? Yes, it's a dictionary. So we reviewed divmod and enumerate. Let's now go to eval. I'm going to key in x equals 5. And then I'm going to say eval, open parens, and then in string format, 
x plus 5. Now, if my math serves me well, eval will take 5 from x, add 5 to it, and give me 10. And there we go. Now, there's another usage for eval. For example, if you had a compiled object, and that'll be the name of the variable, which is going to hold the return from the compile function, which will take x equals 5 plus 5, and then hit the carriage return key, and then here's the next command, print x, and then again hit the carriage return key, and uh, we'll end it there. There's our two commands, x equals 5 plus 5, and print x. And I have to give it a module name, and I have to do that as a string, gbm, George Bool module. And how is this going to be executed? By using the execute command. Surprise is coming. And, uh, let's see, I totally screwed that up. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. Silly me. This is also supposed to be within a string. There we go. Dollars to donuts, this works, and it does. Now, let's use the execute function on this. But wait a minute, uh, George, I thought you were using the eval function. Yes, I am. Bear with me. So I key in execute, whatever is in CO, and I get 10. I'm going to be supremely daring, and now key in eval, what is in CO. And, ah, it does the same job. And so I took a series of commands, strung them together, fed them to the compile function, and then executed them this way using the exec function, and then evaluated CO using the eval function. So there we go. We've covered our four target functions. Mission accomplished.